speaking of coaches, Danny Hurley. Oof. Staying put. <laughs> Danny Hurley staying put. Danny Hurley got some y'all. mega cojones. <laughs> Sham Sharanya says, quote, he was not the number one candidate to go and pursue from the start. At the end of the day, he chose to stay for $20 million less at UConn. What's your instant reaction? Respect. To Danny Hurley saying no. I respect him. I respect Danny Hurley with that. Because he got a loyalty to that UConn fan base and everything, man, that you can't put money on. You can't put a price on it, man. The loyalty that he just showed, man, that's... <laughs> I mean, they still try. They still up the... Yeah, they up the, the I mean, he was on six for 32. They gave him 50 million over six years. The Lakers offer was, I think it was 70 million over six. I well, know, but you got to think. Ransom. But you got to think, it probably is the same because that 20 million extra in living in LA. <laughs> that's living in, in, yeah. in Connecticut. Property man, tax. Man, please, he's going to lose some money, man. That's, that's really a six year, $46 million deal they offered him. Grab them taxes. <laughs> Sure, but I, I think, but I, I really respect him so much for that because, you know what I'm saying, he could have left, but you got to think, and if we keeping it real, LA's not a championship team today. No. So you're leading your, a made situation in UConn for a that flip of the coin. A, a championship situation. A championship situation, that back-to-back back championship for a flip of the coin type situation in LA, and also, and as the trend has been going out there, you, you three years tops out there if you don't make something shake. You know what I'm saying? You got to win the championship. Yeah. So I think it was just so much pressure on him to come out there to replicate what he's done in UConn in L.A. And I think that's just, that's not even realistic. You know what I'm saying? And it's crazy that these people think that he could go do that, make that transition and make this L.A. team just, like, I don't think, you know, college, sometimes the college coaches transition to pros and it makes sense, but it I might. think it would have just mm-hmm. been too much pressure on him. I think he recognized it, but just also the loyalty that he has for UConn and what he has built there, I don't think it was worth breaking down. And I just commend him and I respect him so much for just saying no. <clears throat> I, I, he, he knows who he is. He knows where he want to be at. And I just got so much respect for him. Yeah, and, and it definitely, like I said, you know, for me, if I was in that situation and I said it before, no, I wouldn't have took it because no Put matter the way. No, because number one, I got six years in already with this program. You know what I'm saying? I won two out of the last three, right? And here's the other thing. I can get who I want. You, you know what I'm saying? Show. Me and my lady was talking about this on the way down here. Mm. I, can, I can get who I want. You know what I'm saying? So, so think about it. Think about it. When you're an NBA head coach mm. and you're talking about, okay, the draft or even a trade, the higher-ups, they can get my opinion. Oh, no, I think we should get player A. But the higher-ups believe that player B is a better fit. So with me, even if I'm like the player, I mean, excuse me, the coach GM, yeah. As, as we've seen happen a lot with, you know, nowadays, even if I'm the coach GM, yeah. it's still the the president and the owner who makes the final decision. Right. Go through so to me, that's, that's, that's how it's been. So I was like, okay. I was like, you, you know, it was, a, it was a good thing. It was a good thing. But again, as I said, if I was him, nah. I wouldn't do that because I built this program up. Mm. I built this program up to be back in that whole blue blood competition. Mm -hmm. I built this program up over the last six years. I can get who I want. You know, if if you're a tenacious defender and like, y'all, you guard 94 feet, everything, like, yo, I'm going after him. But if I'm a coach in the NBA, well, the organization might not look at that same player the way I do. They might look at him like, oh, we need more scoring or this or that, blah, 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 blah. But I'm like, man, this motherfucker's a great on-ball defender, picks up 94 feet. He can start my press off. Like that's my what we press need. Defense. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So with that whole stabilization between the NBA and college, no, I'm going to stay college because I can get who I want. Mm. The NBA is too many other motherfuckers mm. that got factors going into it. You know, you let's just say you could have a hard-nosed NBA owner that's like Jerry Jones. We all know Jerry Jones is going to put his motherfucking 
whole nickel right. in <laughs> when it come to who we gonna draft. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, but no, that that college. Well, hey, and, and you can contest to this because you're a collegiate coach. You guys go after who you want. You who who's better for your program? Opposing to, depending on a draft or depending on a trade. Right. No, from the door. I need a wing defender. Guess who you gonna go out and and recruit? A wing defender. Uh-huh. Recruiting's different. I mean, uh, well, <laughs> you know, recruiting. I mean, it's, it's different it's, now, it's, you know, with the whole NIL, but color free overall, agents. Color free you get agents. the gist of what <laughs> I'm saying. Yeah, no, no, I hear you. But you get the yeah. gist of yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah. saying. So it's like, if, if I'm him, exactly. No, I wouldn't took that neither. I don't have command of my team. Mm. Him being at UConn right now, I got command of my organization. Yeah, it's all about control. Control. Yo, control. I can command. If I want two coaches, hey, yo, I heard about this kid who plays in Sacquishquaw, Illinois, or Sacquishquaw, Montana. I need y'all to go see him. Guess what I could do? Send them, and yeah, granted, you could do that as a, a head coach in the NBA, but it's different. Right. You know what I'm saying? When you're going out, it's different because now, because it's more of, a, of an immediate impact. Mm. If I'm going to get that kid, because, all right, I know you coming next year to my program, Tyler, mm. and I know that, shit, you a lockdown defender. Like, shit, all That's right. right. So let me get somebody who going to go great with him. Oh, damn. This kid from motherfucking Muncie, Indiana. Like, <laughs> shit, I'm going to go recruit him because he's a scorer. Right. You know what I'm saying? And this will be my one-two to start my program on. That's how it is as that college coach. I can get who I want, but it's a little different as that NBA coach. Well, now we see players pick, like LeBron picked the Lakers. Oh. And LeBron, pick, LeBron pretty much told the Lakers, he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to come there. Y'all figure it out. I'm bringing AD with me. Like so, y'all figure you know that what I'm out. Saying? So it's, it's it's different. Yeah, it's different. But you know what I'm saying? That's that's how the game goes. That's how it is now. But no, I'm I'm. Hey, it put me in a situation where I gained more respect for Dan Hurley. I mean, I already had respect for him and his clan. Mm-hmm. You know, him Ooh. and his dad, especially his dad. You know, been been great as you far know, Bobby as Bobby wasn't Duke Duke Duke. I respect him, but no, nah, <laughs> no, nah, okay. Duke ain't shit. <laughs> but they're gonna put know, that as, on. They're gonna put that, that on the website. Put it on your website, dude. They playing yeah, that for the next yeah, Duke, Duke uh, UNC Duke game. Oh yeah. my fuck god. D O O K. I said <laughs> F U K D O O K. Wow. But let's go, know, Georgia that, Tech. That's a, that's a good clan. You know what I'm saying? As far as when it comes to basketball, they learn from their dad. Hmm. So uh, no, I'm 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 back for it's, it's values. He's like I said before. Hey. He's an East Coast kid. You know, mm. everybody on the East Coast don't fuck with the West Coast. You know, it ain't got lifestyle. nothing to do with the rap war and all that bullshit, but everybody on the East Coast don't fuck with the West Coast and vice versa. Everybody on the West Coast don't fuck with the East Coast. Yeah. But here we have it in this coaching situation. No, nah, Hurley was like, no, nah, I don't care what y'all offer. Look, I ain't going to just drop this program. I done built this program for the last six years. No, y'all, y'all not going to just buy me out like that. You know, this family here, and when mm. I say the family, he's talking about the Yukon family, mm. and, you know, I, I'm pretty sure that Rick can contest it is as far as how they do things up there as far as, you know, professional and this and that, blase, blase. No, I'm not going to leave that for the show, yeah. the lake show, because we mm. know out there it's, it's a show. Right. We all know it's a show. What have we been calling it for years? The lake show. What was the question, man? This motherfucker was talking so long, I forgot again, oh, man. shit, quit kicking me. You know you get to talking, man. What, what did you say? What was we talking just about? How you feel about the... Just the hiring general? Should you turn down the bread? Uh, I did an acceptance speech, boy. I was passionate. <laughs> Do you think... Is it embarrassing for the Lakers to get turned down? Like this? Like a very public fashion. No. Only thing really going on is the finals, and then this news broke out of nowhere. He I seemed mean, like the guy till he wasn't. I mean, I think it was good that you that that someone told him no. You know what I'm saying? Because you everybody in here, including us, probably was saying there's a no brainer that he can't turn down the Lakers. I so, said he didn't. What the fuck? Yeah, so no, I'm just saying, but it's it's you didn't say that. Yeah, I told I told him if you I did was say, him, I yeah, wouldn't you said you wouldn't have did it. The rumor money at first was a hundred million. If it was a hundred million, I was like, he gotta listen. Yeah, that's what I think that's what I gotta then, listen. They, I gotta <laughs> listen. That's what we talked about. And but. then yeah. But, the, but it's cool that he that 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 you see somebody that, that just just don't run for the money, 
You know, yeah. he, he still he still on what he stood on, mm-hmm. and um, he, he still on business. Mm-hmm. Is that the word? He still mm-hmm. on some business. Yeah, some business. What is he? he still, that business. Yeah, he's still <laughs> on business. But that, that, that's cool. So then it's almost like, do you take that Plan B? Who, who who's Plan B? Is it JJ Reddick? That is, 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 is Reddick that feels like, like the what? There's a this is from Vincent Goodwill. He said some folk, quote some folks around the league feel JJ Reddick won't want to be involved with the circus. That he won't want to be a second choice, but he wants to coach. The Lakers seem very intrigued by him for whatever reason, and the focus will smoothly shift. <laughs> for whatever reason, will smoothly shift Oof. to him because who else? The coaching cycle's nearly over, and Reddick does a podcast with LeBron James. So LeBron James. It seems like Reddick is that yeah. option, but what if he says wow. no? What what if he's like, I don't, I don't think y'all tried to recruit nah, over nah, me. He can't say no now. He, he obviously. <laughs> He still skipped the line, so for oh, him to for he? them to backtrack and come back around, he can't say no. JJ can't right. say no. I mean, it's, that's 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 like probably got to be bucket list thing for him, and you know, to be a coach. So I, man, that's crazy. I mean, I obviously they gotta they gotta the Lakers gotta feel humbled a little bit, you know what I'm saying? But for somebody to tell them no with all the stuff that they mm. threw at him, this the Lakers, this is the top franchise in in our game. And for somebody to say no, it's got to be like, oh, wow, wow, wow. But I, I, I totally expect us to hear J.J. Reddick be the front runner within the next few days by the end of the week and taking a Lakers position. Mm-hmm. And, and I think he's going to take it. I think he's not going to worry about being the second fiddle. And a lot of that stuff be, you know what I'm saying, word on the street, we heard Her this and all that. Allegedly. Everybody, yeah. Allegedly and all that stuff. So you, you never know. But I, if I was him, I wouldn't take it personal. I'd just get that bag. Mm-hmm. And if they want to give me $70 million, for five years, was it five years? Well, that was for Six Hurley years. though. Reddick ain't gonna get the the Danny Hurley. Yeah, no, he ain't gonna, he ain't gonna get the Danny no Hurley. Yeah, that shit. He got, but he got to get something. <laughs> yeah, he got something, but he ain't he gonna, gonna get, get, okay. get something. Let's say if he get five year fifty, yeah. that's still great money. And yeah. if, yeah. even if they fire him after two years, they still got to pay him the rest of it. Cash him out, so he's gonna be eat good. Like cash you, me out. You got you got to take it. You got to take it. Yeah. Do we think was this Hurley just like was he ever really gonna coach the Lakers or was this just him? Knowing he was gonna stay at UConn, Woj, the guy he put it out with, wrote a book on his pops, so he close I with mean, that family. And, and, and also, you and gotta, he ended up getting a raise. But you gotta think, what other name could they have threw out there that could have got this type of buzz? That's why Hurley Her- Her- was like, "Oh, I know they need me more than they I need." need them. That, that's that's what it was <laughs> yeah. because the names they was throwing out there it wasn't the they buzz James wasn't. Borrego. Yeah, the buzz wasn't there. Yeah. So then when they threw it out there, we all talking about man, cause, cause the storyline was different. You know what I'm saying? We can mm-hmm. go. Bring a J.J. Reddick from the podcast to this bench. We can go hire a couple of these longtime assistants. You know, they threw Sam's name in there. They threw Brego. I think I'm saying his name right. Mm-hmm. So them names, don't get me wrong, no disrespect to them, but it, it it wasn't like, oh, my goodness, it wasn't front page news. Now you Because throwing, it was an unbelievable buzz. It was um, So now you're throwing Hurley, who's like, oh, he's a two-time champion. He can leave mm-hmm. UConn. Like, he's never coached an NBA game. Mm-hmm. But now all of a sudden he's the front runner to be the head coach of the, the story franchise. Like, that was that was front page worthy for people to start talking about. So it was just a buzz, and yeah, it was just a buzz, was, and it was a cool little buzz because we mm. was like, "Would he do it?" And right. to find out he wouldn't just says a lot about who he is. Mm. You said you would still take the job if you were JJ. Would you if you were Reddit? You still or you would never take the job? Well, um, for for me, if if I'm a coach, no, period, I wouldn't take that job. Like even if my name, even was if you were Reddit though, mix, who's not a coach, he's not a coach. Yeah, he's an analyst right people. now. You wouldn't just take a chance just to see if you can do it, because that's what he they doing. They put $50 million in the thing. <clears> but, that's what but, doing. but here's the thing. I know if, if I can feel like I can do it, that's different from I know I can do it. But how do I know I can do it if I've never done it? How do you know you can't, though? Until you do it. But how do, I've never done it before. I've never been a head coach. How do you know? And, you now, and now here I am on a, the hottest <laughs> stage. Um, that then that plays a big key, you know. That's that plays a big part in this. But I'm yeah. on the hottest stage, bro. And so everything I do, every move I make, every play. You on the Well, even though they don't do too many plays right now, it's just all freelance. But still, every play I I draw up, yo. I'm in the hot seat just because of the organization of this job that I took. But yeah. but you gotta understand, that's just a Monday for. 
a, a professional player, you're always getting critiqued. You're always like you're used to that life. True. You're used to that life of True. always getting critiqued. You're but always. But it's not. Like, it's not the same being that that player or coach but I, in I, Utah as it is in L.A. But I get that. Yeah. But I think he'll be able to handle it better than a regular person who's just coming off the street. They never coached before. You know what I'm saying? Because you're used to that scrutiny. You used to always being judged. You used to walk on the fine line. Obviously, I mean, I agree with you totally that he's really gonna get scrutinized in L.A. But we all know coming in the door, he don't have the resume, the res, my receive voice, the, the resume, mm -hmm. the resume, the resume mm -hmm. that 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 a Hurley would have or one of these seasoned coaches because they've been coaches. So you almost get a pass a little bit, you know what I'm saying, to a certain extent, and not. But like, do you though? Mm. Like, uh, no, 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 no. Like don't get me wrong. Yeah. Not who, with that organization. But do you expect? Right. Do you expect him to sit in that huddle and draw a fire ass play? No, I do. You don't. No, you don't. But you expect the assistance that he's with, that's with him, to help him go ahead and no, connect fuck all the dots. That. As that player, saying, you the head coach. If you're giving him the I'm not expecting it. Yeah. I'm not no. expecting everybody else that you brought with you to draw up a but play. But that's what it's going to be though. In reality, though, because all these people you're going to bring in is going to give you the formula. They're going, we're going to sit in these meetings. We're going to all put our heads together and get the formula on how to put it out there to them. Will so they by, respect by that? how many times? That's the reality of it, though, because we know he's never coached. That, why are we going to act like he's coached But how coached many times before? we picked out fake motherfuckers? But, uh, but Okay, that's fine, though. They're going to pick him out from day one, but what right. if he come in and he's good at it? What if he come in and all the stuff that we've been meeting about pre preseason and all that stuff, and it all makes sense to everybody? Because these dudes, he got to put a fire veteran type um, a staff winning. He got to. He yeah. got to. And people that, that can that can also talk to these players and make sure we all on the same page. That's cool. You gotta have you gotta have blue a glue coaching staff because the coaching it's staff fail is this dude. It could I mean I, I'm which <laughs> see that's that part that part from your perspective, dude. but I think you know what I'm saying he'll be able to handle it better than a regular another person who's never coached before or never had a head coaching job or never been on nobody's bench. I think he can handle it better than a regular person because he's mm -hmm. already been under scrutiny in his whole life. Hey, it's, hey, it's Duke. It, yeah. I, I hear that, but like Frank Vogel came and was a lifelong coach. Won a title and was still up out of there. No, I'm just saying. The ham new coach it don't matter didn't get the, that's like, are people going to have the patience for him no, until gonna, he gets good? They're not going to have the patience. They're not going to have the patience. But like I said, J.J. Reddick got the look. He looked like an L.A. coach. He looked like a Pat, young Pat Riley. They want him to be on the bench mm. 20 something years if they could. They want to be like, oh, what's the locker guy. room feeling though? I don't know. The locker room going to feel some type of way always. <laughs> and that's right. key. Right. But, that's the key. <laughs> but when hasn't a locker room felt some type of way right. about something? There's always something in that locker room. You know how them locker rooms go. Yeah, man. true. But yeah. that's, that's going to be the key. Like, like, and that's where the respect level comes into play because if, all right, if I'm a, a Tim Legler ass dude, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I, I shot a couple jump shots. I won me a little motherfucking uh, three point contest. But other than that, you know, his career, the career wasn't shit. But <laughs> Jesus, you look, you look at that as far as as far as the same way when it comes to coaching. But Reddick was better than that. Reddick was good. No, no, true. He was a good. He was a good player, player but. As a younger player, if I'm looking at him like, motherfucker, that's all you could do is shoot. Like, you couldn't play defense. So is that how they look like at Steve Kerr and Golden State? I mean, they, they could have. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm not in that locker room. They could have. Well, he got chips they, they could it. They could have looked at him and just like, oh, oh, shit, man, this motherfucker, he just play with Jordan or play with Tim Duncan, you know, mm. this and that, da 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 da, da. He, he could have just been that, that fill-in player. Like you never know how these young cats look at you know us as the veterans. But they play, they play for him. They they plan for Jason Kidd. They play for they play for ex players, man. If you can relate. Oh yeah, to no, you definitely as, as a player show, now. Yeah, yeah we, we can be trusted. But and, yeah. and we've done that. Yeah, if you relate to him, if you can yeah. relate to a coach, you'll play. You'll you'll do anything for him. So you never you unless they're a baseball coach. Yeah, you never know. And then that's Bron's guy though. So you better like him. You better like, you, you better uh, you, you better lean his way. You gonna be a piston, but you better lean his way. Yeah, you gonna be in Alcatraz. You're an Orlando magician. <laughs> uh. You gonna be in motherfucking Jacksonville Community College, <laughs> <laughs> motherfucking pickup game. Practice games. squad team. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>